What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Young and Extraordinary. It's been a minute, but we're back. Another exciting makeover today. Uh, we are doing our guest bathroom. It was of course budget friendly like all the stuff we do. Uh, and it was kind of done on a tight time frame as we had people coming into town and we were going out of town. Before we jump into today's video though, we do want to remind you guys to make sure you guys hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Smash that bell. Smash that subscribe <laughs> button and the bell. That way you guys don't miss out on any new content coming in the future. Um, we've got tons of makeovers, DIY projects, all sorts of things that are coming, even some lifestyle things that are coming to the channel. So you definitely don't wanna miss out on those things. So make sure you're subscribed and definitely comment down below what you'd like to see next from us. If there's a specific space that you'd like to see us do, um, we'll have a house tour coming soon, all sorts of good stuff. So hit that bell notification, that way you guys don't miss out on any future content. Just like that, let's jump into the video. <laughs> so actually to kick off this makeover, I do wanna show you guys what the content of this space looked like before that when we rough. first moved in. <laughs> It was super rough. So the clip that I'm about to show you here is actually when, uh, before we even owned the house, um, Curtis came to tour the house and sent me a video of it. And so this is the original bathroom space before we did anything to it. And yeah, you can see it's a little rough. But what we decided to do prior to us having YouTube was we went over all that wallpaper that was in there with paint which is pretty crazy. Um, I will link the supplies down below that we used for that painting technique, but we just painted straight over the wallpaper uh, right after we moved in and we made the entire bathroom just a white canvas and then it kind of sat that way ever since. We never really did anything else with it. That wallpaper was just so atrocious that we couldn't look at it anymore. And the whole bathroom from top to bottom move the cover up the wallpaper and it has held up perfectly for the past year and you would never know unless we told you yeah which we just did so big news you can paint over wallpaper from there now you see our blank white canvas and this is what we were working with when we started we just wanted to give this space um an update still on a budget but just make it a look a little bit more modern a little bit more fresh because like we said we were having some guests come to stay with us and that was going to be the bathroom that they were going to be using so we wanted to make it as updated looking as possible so the next thing that we really wanted to do was to paint an accent wall in the bathroom i didn't want to paint a whole wall on um, one solid color because it is a really small tight space and i felt like it would just enclose it too much so my idea was to basically just paint one big fat vertical stripe and i wanted to add um, a pop of color because in our house we have a lot of like earth tones neutral tones so we don't really have a ton of color throughout the house it's more muted so i chose this really dark green color and i'll have the exact color listed down below um, but I absolutely love the way it turned out. It added the perfect pop um, without it being overbearing in the room. When we decided to paint this uh, big vertical stripe on the wall, I felt like it was important for it to be centered uh, behind the mirror versus being centered on the wall. So when you're standing at the vanity and you're looking in the mirror, it's directly centered behind you versus the stripe being centered on the wall per se. It just looks better when you're in the space. It might not necessarily translate on camera, I'm not sure, but when you're physically in the space, it looks so good because you stand in front of that vanity and you have this beautiful dark green behind you in one crisp, clean stripe. Really torn as to replace the floors, do new tile, carry on with the, the rest of the flooring that we did in the house, or what to do. So Sarah had a really good idea, and she saw a tutorial would be like painting the floors and doing a stencil on the top. 
Now, unfortunately, the stencil did not work out very well. Uh, we had issues with bleeding. We had issues with getting it to look like a crisp, clean line. And that was one thing I really didn't want to have was bleed marks under the stencil. I wanted it to look like the tile came that way. Then after we seal it, it looked perfect. And we just couldn't get that that desired uh, texture. The stencil just didn't yeah, work. Yeah, it just didn't work. It how didn't work. To it. Now I tried something new this time. I've painted hundreds of gallons of paint away, but I've never used an actual spray gun to spray latex paint. And it really was a game changer. And I sprayed most of the bathroom. What I ended up using was a water-based latex paint um, in a really cheap sprayer I got from Harbor Freight. It was $19 and I got 20% off, so it was like 14 bucks. And I used my air compressor and of course an airline and I sprayed the cabinet and I sprayed the floor. And we masked the inside of the bathroom and it went to town. And from there I went over the gun and I went around the perimeter first in the back by the toilet and then just literally painted it just like you would paint with, with spray paint. And honestly, I really recommend if anybody on our channel has an air compressor, get an air hose and get one of these guns and start playing with it because the finish is spectacular mm -hmm. and it really just paints so quickly. Um, I will use it more and more and more. I'll probably end up buying a bigger gun so I can paint walls with it. It's really that great. Now, for the tutorial of painting slash stenciling your existing tile, I personally don't think I would recommend it. Um, I loved the technique of using the spray gun. I thought it was great. It made it super seamless. Um, the finish was beautiful, but the actual paint, the way it looks on the floor, I'm not a fan of at all. Um, it's honestly been very difficult to keep clean. I followed numerous tutorials on Pinterest that people swore up and down that it works great and their tile looked awesome and the pictures looked wonderful, but I want to keep it real with you guys. For us, it didn't work um, and I used the common products, which I'll link them down below. Uh, that were recommended in these tutorials of how to paint your existing tile floor. Um, so we probably will eventually change it, whether it's gonna be with some other type of paint as a trial and error, or we're just gonna retile the bathroom altogether, but something is definitely gonna have to change because it's not holding up the way that we thought it would. It's not scratching or chipping, it's just getting really dirty really easily. So if you roll something, in there or you take like a, sh a rubber shoe or something to it it scuffs it or it's like a black mark on it and it just doesn't look good in a picture it looks fantastic mm -hmm. and the bathroom when you open the door it looks it looks stunning it really does but i think longevity wise it's not something i would do again i would probably just go through the trouble to put a different tile down yeah agreed but, so the shower we didn't do a lot too but the little we did made a big difference mm -hmm. in my opinion um of course like you said we we're on a budget it's a guest bathroom it gets used maybe once every two months by somebody um so we weren't going to replace the shower door but we didn't like the aged look of the chrome uh, so what we did was we scuffed it with a brillo pad it's very lightly just to make some texture in the metal nothing crazy and then we spray painted it we used matte black spray paint by rosoleum and it covered really really good mm -hmm. and it looks brand new yeah. it looks really really good and you know it may not last for 10 or 15 years but for the volume that the shower sees it just makes sense it costs us eight or nine dollars for the paint and it looks totally different. And we followed that up with the fixtures inside the shower so everything matches uniform. So the next thing on the to-do list was the cabinet. Now the cabinet that was in the bathroom was definitely a builder's grade for mica top, um, very basic fixtures, cheap. So instead of us replacing that, we looked at different vanities and they ranged between $200 to $600, which is just way out of the budget for this room for us. Now when we do our own bathroom, we're probably gonna splurge a little bit more because we use it multiple times a day. But in this room, we just didn't want to spend that type of money. So I used two different types of paint in order to paint the cabinet. Uh, so first off is I scuffed the cabinet a little bit with like a 400 grit paper. I didn't want any type of, of sanding line to be in it. And then from there, I used a primer. So I sprayed the primer and the gun. It came out super, super flat. I sprayed that really good, let that dry, and then I sprayed a second coat. Um, from there, I used a black latex paint. Um, I think it was Bear Ultra. It was recommended by the guys at Home Depot and it worked out great, same thing. Sprayed it all black. I had three coats in the black and it looks like I bought it off the showroom floor. Finish it out, Sarah picked out the uh, pulls we're gonna use, a nice modern pull, and that was it. It was really a simple process. So for the top of the cabinet on the countertop, we did have that old Formica, like Curtis said, and it just didn't go with the space, obviously. Um, we had talked about doing some different things 
with um, like Stone Coat Epoxy is a product that we've been really wanting to try um, or even possibly. Maybe you guys can send us a sample and we'll put you in a video. <laughs> Sponsor us. Right. Um, but we've talked about that in the past and we've also talked about, you know, potentially replacing the cabinets. We've talked about butcher block, we've talked about all different things. But we decided for this makeover, um, because we were on a time crunch, number one, and number two, we weren't trying to spend a lot of money at all to just go with your traditional contact paper, which the contact paper that we ordered, I'll have it linked down below. It came from Amazon. Um, it got here super quick. I've ordered contact paper in the past. So it's take, taken an eternity to get here for some reason, um, even with Amazon Prime but it got here super fast and I will say it is a beautiful contact paper. It has a matte finish to it and the marbling in it is got a lot of depth to it. If you saw it from afar, it looks legit. It looks like the real deal thing. However, <laughs> it comes with a disclaimer. You're going to have to work for this contact paper to work for you. So I did struggle a little bit. Um, I threw away probably more contact paper than I used, but I wanted it to be done right. <laughs> Curtis was really mad was putting this happy. contact oh, paper I was, on. I was not happy. I do not like contact paper. I would have rather just replace the countertop. Replacing the countertop for the purpose of this video. Wasn't happy. It wasn't an option. <laughs> so we had to make it work and um, I had to talk him through it a little bit because he was struggling. Hello, dog. I think the best way to do it to make sure it looked really like a cohesive piece of marble, not contact paper, is to remove the sink. So that's what I decided to do. Um, it took about 30 minutes. It was glued in there pretty good, um, but I just got my, my putty knife underneath there and I was able to cut all the glue and then pulled it out. Cleaned up the countertop really good and then started working. And that really is what gave it a professional looking finish. Because instead of trying to get the contact paper to go around the sink, I just put it right over the hole and then cut the rest out. Yeah, and then to finish it off, we actually, uh, used caulk all along the seams of where the little lip of the top of the formica met the actual countertop and then along the uh, rim of the sink as well and it made all the difference yeah. it makes it look so clean like the real deal if we didn't tell you that it was contact paper you honestly would never know if you walked into the bathroom it looks fantastic So next we move on to our shelving. Now this is a technique we've used in a couple different areas of the house, but we just really like it a lot. Yeah. So we decided to make two shelves to go above where the toilet is. We used some basic pipe fittings that we got from Home Depot, spray painted them black. And then as always, Curtis has a lot of spare wood in the garage and we went out there picked a piece of wood, and then Curtis went ahead and sanded it down. We stained it in Early American, um, and that was it. We put it up there, and I absolutely love the way that it turned out. It gave us an option for a styling moment. Tie this whole space together is, of course, my favorite part, the styling moments. So I kept it pretty simple and clean in the bathroom. I did decide to take this little number uh, hook thing that I've had for years. I didn't film this on camera, but we, we took all the numbers off and we sanded it down and we made it um, to match the shelf. So in that early American color, and I absolutely love the way it turned out. Over that, I decided to actually take a photograph that I've taken of some palm trees. I edited it to uh, match the color scheme of the room and I'm just having that professionally printed and I'm gonna be framing it in a black and white frame that I got from Target. Another piece that I actually designed for the space is going on one of the shelves over the toilet. It says, wash your hands in black and white. It's just a big, bold graphic print. Um, I really love adding graphic prints to a space. It just brings a different feel and element. It's kind of fun and whimsical, but still 
like a big bold statement. Both of these prints are actually going to be listed in my Etsy shop, which will be linked down below. Definitely go check it out if you guys would like to support our channel or if you just like the prints and want them for yourself. To actually finish off this space, I decided that the vanity needed one more touch. I wanted to add a fun pop when you open the doors and you look underneath inside the vanity. It was originally that same wood color, but it just didn't look finished enough for me. So I decided to get the seal and stick wallpaper from Target in this beautiful print. It's got these big palm leaves on it and I just thought it added a fun pop of green. It tied in the green wall and it just made it look fresh and bright down there. And just like that, the bathroom has been made over. All right, you guys, that is it. It wraps it up for our guest bathroom makeover. We hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we got to do it, even though it was a struggle sometimes. We had a lot of fun making over this space. We always have a good time, and we enjoyed doing this for you guys. Again, I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe and smash that bell notification uh, and comment too. You know, we do interact with all of our, our comments. We, we love to see what people are thinking. Thank you so much. Remember, stay young. Stay extraordinary. See you next time. Bye.